Hello, I'm Rick Stivers. I'd like to welcome you to Young Martin's Reels. Today's project is going to be this Pentacle BL60 black metal reel. And um, this is another one I'm doing for Ken. And um, we're going to take this thing apart. It actually functions beautifully already. Um, there's nothing wrong with it except it's old and dirty. And uh, the drag works. It didn't work when I first got hold of it, but it does now. And anti-reverse override works, anti-reverse works. So everything's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, but he wants it cleaned up, so that's exactly what we're going to do. Get it ready for him to take to the coast. Okay, we're going to start off by taking off the handle. There we go. Then we're going to take off the spool by unscrewing the drag knob. Here we go. Actually, it looks pretty good there. Very dirty inside there, though. So we're going to have to do some cleanup in there. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay. Now we're going to take the side cover off. We're going to start off with... Um, This small screw here on this bump cap here. There we go. Let's see if we can take that off. There we go. We'll set that over to the side. That now reveals this screw, which was not visible before. And um, let's see if we can get this on apart. Okay, see if we can take the side cover off. Since we got the screws out, I believe it separates here. Let's find out. It looks like it might have another screw left in it somewhere. Definitely separates here. There we go. And the side plate comes off. Okay, definitely roller bearing in here. Let's see if that turns. Yes, it does. Let's go ahead and give that roller bearing a drink of oil. Okay, Axle's main gear does not want to come out yet, so let's go ahead and remove the screw from the axle shaft cross wire block. All right, take out the axle shaft, and let's put that screw back into the axle shaft so nothing happens to it. And this actually feels like it's been oiled pretty well. Okay, let's go ahead and remove the main gear. And it's got old grease in it, but aside from that, it looks fine. All right, now we are going to see about removing the crosswind block, which looks good. And Crosswind gear looks like it's held in by a screw, so let's go ahead and remove the screw for it. Okay. There's the gear out. Okay, and it looks to be in excellent condition. Now we're down to removing the nut. And it's a reverse threaded nut. And that is a 14 millimeter. There we go. 
goes the nut. I'll slide the rotor off and it's dirty, but it appears to be pretty functional. It's a little bit gritty. We're gonna probably end up taking this bail wire apart on this particular reel. And uh, let's see what we've got under here. All right, here's our anti-reverse cog. And it has a washer, it looks like, on top of it, maybe. Let's see if that is a washer. Yep, that's a, that's a shim washer on top of it. Is there one on the bottom? Nope. Not there, anyway. And it's gritty feeling. So this is going to definitely require some cleaning. Okay, now we have a spring underneath here that is not attached. And it does belong attached. It goes in this groove right here. So... Let's see if we can get it out of there without snagging on it. First off, let's take this spring and get it out of the way, like so. All right. And that releases this one, this spring. And then this one here for the anti-reverse comes around and it goes right there. So it's easy to put back when needed. Okay, this is all very gritty inside. This bearing feels very gritty inside. Hopefully we can get it all, get all the sand and particulates removed from it. Okay, now one thing that just fell out was the bushing that goes on that side over there. It's a bronze bushing. So that goes into that hole right there. So keep an eye on things like that because there are things that will fall if you're not careful. Sometimes even if you are careful, things will fall out. All right, that's all three screws removed that retain the bearing. Let's pull the bearing out. And uh, it looks pretty good. The pinion gear looks really good. And we're going to clean that bearing up. And um, I don't see a reason to take this off since it's moving freely. And this one over here is moving freely as well. So we're going to leave those in place. And we'll scrub all of this right where it sits. Okay, we've got all that apart. This bail wire, however, feels a little on the gritty side. So we're going to see if we can get this removed out of here. First thing we're going to start off with is this screw up here. Yes, it is going to come out. A lot of times this screw does not want to come out. Okay, we're going to set this back in here. This is actually a pretty well made reel. It's good quality parts installed in it, but now if you'll notice, this is this bale is a little sprung. See how that's not lining up to the hole? Well, we're going to adjust this so that that screw sits right in the hole when it's ready to. Okay, now this side is not spring loaded, it moves easily. Well, it should move easily, but it really doesn't. It's very gritty feeling, so we're going to take that off and clean under it. This side over here is your spring side, right here, and uh, it's feeling pretty gritty also. So let's go ahead and remove the side cover plate first. Okay. And the side plate. And there's our loaded spring. Okay, so that we want to be careful that we don't let it just take off and launch. Now, if you want, you can unload this by putting a finger over the top of it. And just taking a screwdriver and hooking under it. And lifting it out. Now this one may have a, a post that it sits on. There we go. We're hooked in. There we go. And it snapped. That took the tension off of it. 
and we're going to load it back in that way when we go to put it back. Okay, let's go ahead and remove this screw. There is our spring arm. It slides down inside the spring. And uh, yeah, it's pretty dirty. We'll slide it back into the spring for now so it can sit there. And then we've got this trip lever that'll get greased when we go to put it back in. And uh, the only thing we've got left to take off is these two screws here on this side. Okay, and we take the side plate cover off, there we go, and now we've got this part, this part, this part, this part, and this part, and this part, ready to go be scrubbed. And let's go ahead and pop the bearing out of this side, and we'll scrub it as well. There we go. That gives us all these parts needing to be cleaned and scrubbed. And I just scrub all these in a sink. Okay? So I will be back in a minute. Okay, we're back. All the body parts have been scrubbed and cleaned. I've got a little bit of cleanup work left to do on some of the, uh, like the uh, pinion gear and that stuff. But uh, the body parts have all been cleaned and so we're ready. all right one of the important parts that you haven't seen cleaned yet is the uh, roller assembly on this arm so we're going to go ahead and take this off you've got the metal washer with the plastic washer that sits over top of it then you've got the roller outside section and then you should have if i believe yep an inside section okay and you take all these and you clean them good And with them clean. Now, there are some people who disagree with how to do this. Some people will simply oil them. Uh, I prefer to grease these because they seldom actually get taken apart and cleaned. Um, that's why I prefer. There's also a plastic washer inside there, if you didn't notice. Um, okay, we're going to put the plastic insert piece on first. Then we're going to put some grease around that. And uh, the reason some people believe don't believe in greasing these is because they believe that the grease traps more dirt than oil. Um, I, I think a liquid's going to grab dirt, whether it's a heavy liquid or a thin liquid. Either way, I think it's going to grab dirt. So I don't really think it matters. That's just my logic behind thinking. Okay. And on, inside of that, it's going to go this plastic washer right here like so, and then the metal washer. Okay, with those all together like that, that's how that's going to go back inside this assembly on the rotor. Okay, so let's go ahead. It's not going to hurt to go ahead and put it back together right now. Yeah, let's let's wait. Let's, let's put it on in a minute. Let's go ahead for now. Screw this back in just to hold it all together like so. And uh, we'll leave it right there for a moment until we get the rest of this back together. Let's go back to here. And we're going to put some grease along the inside of this track here. And the reason being, that's where the trip lever for the bale is going to ride. Okay. It sits right down in here like so. Okay. And I've now greased that so that it can slide easily. I'm going to add a little bit of oil now. On each side of it I think the grease is probably enough but I want to make sure that it slides well and it's not getting jammed on anything okay now on the other side of that it's gonna go this arm 
okay? This arm is gonna sit right here like so, and it's gonna fit inside this spring over here. Well, let's go ahead then. Let's put some grease on the arm where it slides into the spring. And let's go ahead and slide it into the spring. Now the spring is not going to go all the way in here yet. We're just gonna set it in place like so. All right. Then our arm's gonna come up that this is all gonna fit into. And we've gotta get, let's see what you mean. Gotta make sure I get the right one. Yeah, this is the one for this side. Okay, let's zoom back out a little bit. Okay, we've got this post in the hole. We're gonna set this down. This post over here is gonna go into that slot and set this down like so. And now that it's all in place, that arm can't come out. So let's go ahead and put the screw in real quick and that'll hold it in place. Okay, now that's all moving fairly free. Okay, now we're gonna go back and put this arm back in, our spring in. Spring slides over the end of the arm. I don't know, it's probably got, the, it's probably got a loose end and a tight end maybe. There we go. Slide the spring up. And now comes the fun part. While holding the spring in place, we're going to compress it down in there and lock it into that notch right there. Like so. Okay. Now that's locked in. The spring it's spring loaded. I would put a finger over it if you're going to operate it with the cover off. Okay. Now it moves freely. And we are gonna come back and add some grease in there. Just so the spring doesn't meet too much resistance. Now we're going to put the cover back on, and we've got two covers. i got to make sure I get the right one. I think it's this one. There we go. These parts have all been scrubbed in the sink to get all the excess grit and grime off of them. We can trip that, and it trips beautifully. Okay, I'm going to wipe this off a little bit. I'm going to add oil along here under the head of the screw and along here and work that in a little bit and then once I've worked it in good I'm going to wipe off the excess like so all right now let's come back and let's install this part okay now there's nothing inside here for this arm to ride on except just the post okay so we can go ahead and put that screw in okay and we'll put this side cover on So, put the screw in. Okay, now, if this feels tight, what you can do is loosen it just a hair. Not much, just a hair. Remember that this screw is screwed into graphite, so by, by backing it off a little bit, you didn't really loosen the screw, you just backed it off because it's tight in the graphite. 
So that's a little bit loose there. Let me tighten it just a hair. Okay, let's add some oil. And along the seam. And I'd still feel better if this was just a hair lighter. There we go. There we go. No tension whatsoever on it. Okay, now we've already lubed this. We're going to bring it up. And let's see if we can align it properly. See how it's not sitting to where it's directly over the hole? Well, that adds tension to it. So let's go ahead and see if we can bend the bail wire just a little bit. to where it lines up with the hole naturally. Okay, and now it still needs to come this way a little bit. Okay. All right, that's a much more natural fit. So let's go ahead, put the screw in the hole, yep, and that's where you always have trouble with these, so parts want to fall out and then people forget where the parts went, which is why I showed you earlier where all those parts go, so that that's not a problem. Okay, the rotor's ready to go. Okay, let's start putting things back together now. The case is cleaned out. The, uh, let's go ahead and put this bronze bushing back in down here. It snaps into this side case over here, like so. And we'll give it a little bit of grease inside. Now let's come up top. <clears throat> I have an extra bearing on here because what I did, I soaked these good in WD-40 and then sprayed them with brake cleaner. And then I took my air hose and uh, blew them out while holding them on here so they didn't run, get away from me. And uh, they're perfectly clean now, spin flawlessly. There's no problems with them. So let's go ahead now and put the front main bearing on. Pinion shaft, pinion gear. Let's go ahead and grease the pinion gear. Like so. Now this bearing actually was greased. And I normally oil bearings, but um, the fact that this one is might be subjected to salt water, I've decided I'm gonna go ahead and grease this bearing and uh, it's going to slow the action of it down just a bit and make it harder to turn, but it will help to protect this roller bearing from the salt water. Okay. Let's go ahead and slide that in to the case. The end of the pinion has to go into this little slot there. There you go. Once it drops down in there, you can go ahead and put your three screws back in. With that done, it's time to reinstall this spring back on to this gear. Now remember, don't lose this shim washer that fits on top of it. Let's set it over to the side right now so we don't lose it. But this spring is going to snap onto that gear like that. That's how it should have been. It was not installed that way when we took it apart. All right, so we're gonna take, I think, in order to get this to work right, I think we're gonna have to, um, oh, man, we're gonna have to take that off anyway because I got that, but that's, I let that get spun around. So let's go ahead and take this screw. I hate fuzz. Okay, let's go ahead and take this screw out.
Okay, we're gonna lift this whole spring and lever assembly together right off of there. Set them down so that they stay together. Okay, we're gonna set this one back on here. Gotta line up the slat, the flats. There we go. And I believe that this is gonna be need to be right here in between these two posts right here. Let's go ahead at this point and slip that shim washer back on there. And now we should be ready to reinstall this lever and this arm at the spring. Okay, the spring goes down like so. Okay, and it's going to go like so. See that little tag end right there? It has to hook around the front of that, like so. But now this end here, we've got to get right because there's a slot under here. See that slot? Well, that slot has to fit into this little tiny spring. So let's zoom in a little bit, see if we can get in there to where you can see it. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll set the spring in first. It's got to fit down over the post. <laughs> and it wants to be everything but cooperative today. Okay, get it down on there like so. Okay, then this arm has got to go on. This arm, this side over here, has got to go over that tag end there. This has to go over the post, but then this spring has got to fit into that slot right there. So bring it over and get it into that slot, like so. Okay, with that done, put your spring back, your screw back in. Okay, that spring, see if you can see it, yeah. See that spring is in that slot right there? That's where it needs to be. Let's go ahead. Tighten the screw. All right, with that done, we can take this spring here and hook it over that post. Oh, see the spring? Okay. Remember the front side of it over here is right there, hooking over that lever. And then the back side of it comes around and goes around that post right there. Okay. That's what's going to drive that spring. That's what's going to hold it this direction and pushes it into the gear when necessary. Okay, now go ahead, flip it, put it into anti-reverse mode and see there? And that, it's that little spring underneath that's helping to pull it back in along with this spring up here. Even if this spring was not on there, I believe the little spring underneath would be enough. See there? The little spring underneath is catching enough to pull it in. But this spring here is the helper. Add the two of them together, and it works perfect every time. All right. The next thing we need to put in is our cross wind gear. And it's been cleaned and inspected, and it's fine. And we're going to put grease under the cross wind gear. We're going to put grease into this post here because this that's going to sit down in that notch on there and then we are going to grease the gear and we're going to set that back down in there like so and add a little grease on top and now let's go ahead and set the screw it should still turn freely and it does Take your crosswind block. Let's put some grease down inside it. And set the crosswind block back inside like so. The flat side going forward. At that point, we're ready to install the main gear. Let's see, did you see how that went in? There we go. Okay. And that crosswind block will move like so, sitting on that post on the gear. Now we're going to come back, add grease.
And now remember, the pinion's already been greased. Now we're going to grease these teeth right here, although there's probably enough grease already on the crosswind gear to take care of the job. Because that's what those teeth ride against. All right, we're going to stop for just a second and talk about the anatomy of how this turns and what it does. Okay? As you crank the handle, the handle's attached right here onto the main gear. As you crank the handle, this goes in here like so. Okay, as you crank the handle forward, it turns this pinion gear. That pinion, and it's also, it turns this main gear. The main gear has these little teeth right here. Right, these little teeth right here are synchronized into these teeth over here on the crosswind gear. See how those little teeth are? They align right there. So as this rotates forward, okay, it's going to turn this pinion gear and it's going to turn that crosswind gear. As it turns the crosswind gear, it moves that crosswind block. The crosswind block is attached to the axle shaft right here. And that's what we're getting ready to do. We're going to install, well, first off, we have to put the rotor on. But that, calls, that, as it's attached to that, that will move the spool up and down so that you end up with this wide winding instead of all the line winding in one place. That's basically the anatomy of this reel and how it works. Okay? Okay, our rotor is all cleaned up now and ready to go. Everything under here is in place and intact. So let's go ahead and set our rotor back on. Like so. And now there is a washer here. It's a locking washer that goes, our locking plate slides down and goes right there. Okay, and then there is this nut that is reverse threaded. We'll go ahead and screw that on. Now, we need to put the gear, the main, uh, the axle shaft back in. Now, axle shafts, I almost unanimously or always oil them. I plan to do so on this one, too, even though I did grease some parts that I normally oil. This time, I'm still going to oil the axle shaft because greasing an axle shaft really, really slows it down, the reel down a lot. Go ahead and... Spin it around a little bit while it goes in. Make sure it goes all the way around. And then bring the flat side of it up. See there, you've got a flat side on the axle shaft. Slide it in through the pinion gear. Bring it down. And now you got to line up the hole in the crosswind block with that axle. You line up the hole right here. And we are ready put the screw back in. Now again, this is a reel that's going to be subjected to salt water, most likely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this crosswind block and just put a layer of grease over the components inside that could possibly be exposed to salt water. I don't know how many reels I've taken apart where the gears inside where all the grease was were in excellent shape, but the back side of the gear where nobody ever greased was all corroded and pitted because the salt water ate it up. So I uh, I tend to like to put some grease in there on that, the back side of that and on the crosswind block to help protect them. Okay. This part is clean. We're going to go ahead this is a side plate. We're going to go ahead and put the main gear or the bearing back in for the main gear. Snap it into place. I took this down. I saturated it good with WD-40 and then I sprayed it out with brake cleaner and then I blew it out with my air compressor. So now we're going to oil it good. I'm going to oil it one more time. And we will reinstall the side plate. There we 
go. Got one snap. Here we go. Second snap. Turns nicely. Let's put the four screws back in. Beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna put a drop of oil into the handle up here. Spin it around a bit. Give that a chance to soak in. Okay. And we're gonna slide the handle back in, like so. Go ahead and screw the handle nut back on or sandal screw back on. Okay. That brings it. Well, let's go ahead and put this cover back on here. That's everything except. For doing this rotor. This is a nice high quality rotor. Uh, sorry, not rotor, spool. Let's take that out. Let's take the drag washers out. Looks like they're felt drag washers. And they are. Okay. And I'm gonna clean this up real quick. Okay, we've got that clean. Now let's see about our drag washers. All right. All right, the metal drag washers were in great shape. They just need to be wiped off. And the felts are good, but they're very dry. Let's go one last time in here with a cotton swab. There we go. That's better. All right. Felt drag washer. Keyed drag washer because it's got the rectangular hole in the middle. Yep. Before we do that, let's go ahead and oil that felt drag washer. Keyed washer, felt drag washer, ear drag washer. You can go put this either up or down. I think either way, I don't really think it matters whether those hooks are up or down. Felt drag washer, and the last keyed drag washer. Put that in. We're going to put the wire back in, the retainer clip, and they will shoot. I can promise you, I lost one yesterday. It went a long way. Never even saw it come out. go all right that's installed we're gonna drop that back on oh before we do let's go ahead add a drop of oil to the clicker down here and let's go ahead and put some on the spring just to protect it from rust spin that around there we go and reinstall the drag knob Okay, you can hear it click. Tighten and drag down some more. That's good. One more time. That's good. So, what do we have here? We have a Pinnacle. Black Metal Pinnacle BL60 reel. The anti-reverse override works. 
the anti-reverse works. It's not an instant anti-reverse, but it works. Um, the bale flips now. The drag works. This one's ready to go fishing again. So, Ken, this reel's ready for you again. And uh, I hope you guys found something useful in this video. For now, that's Rick's time. Oh, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the, or like it, hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. I have had an occurrence occurring lately, though, is I've been having some people hit the dislike button, and I don't have a problem with that, folks. If you disagree, please hit the dislike button. But please tell me what it is you didn't like about it, because I can't do anything to fix the video if you don't tell me what it is you don't like about it. Um, so, it's, um, if you would say, if, now, if you would want to say, no, I didn't like the video because I don't like Pinnacle BL60 reels. Well, okay, that's, I understand, but that's, <laughs> it's not exactly very fair to me. Uh, but at least then I know what it is that you didn't like. So I can do something, you know, either do something about it or not do something about it. But um, if I don't have any idea why you didn't like the video, I can't do anything towards improving it. Uh, for now, that's Rick Stivers of Young Martin's Reels, signing out.